guys. Inside out, how are we feeling tonight? Seven yeses. Not even a yeah. I said yeah. Okay, those some yes. Okay. Four yas and seven yeses. All right. Hey, uh, hey, so glad that you're here tonight. So glad uh, that we get to spend this incredible Sunday evening together. If you don't know who I am, my name is Andrew. I have the honor and privilege of, of being here at Inside Out and uh, get to spend my days uh, thinking about you guys and how we can better serve you and ultimately how we can uh, provide a place for you to be inspired to follow Jesus. That's our goal here, and uh, uh, that's our hope. So uh, I'm so glad that you're here. We're one week from Daytona. So exciting. Uh, I saw some wishes being handed out. That's awesome. Way to go for you wishes people. Um, but anyways, I, I, we're finishing up in our uh, series called Grow. We've been doing it this summer. And uh, the series Grow has been all about how we grow our faith, right? How do, how, you, you know, maybe you've been coming to church for a while and you're like, hey, I, you know, I love Jesus. I, I really want to follow him and I really want my faith to grow. How are some ways that I can do this? And maybe if, if you're not a follower of Jesus, maybe you're kind of wanting to know, hey, what are all these Jesus followers about? And uh, maybe you've run into some bad Christians uh, from time to time, and you're like, hey, what are they not doing that makes them uh, not great Christians? And so that's what we're talking about in this series. The whole idea is we want to grow our faith. And, and we're ending uh, this series today, uh, which is going to be awesome. And we're going to be talking about uh, private disciplines. But before we do that, I wanted to talk quickly, um, just as like kind of a get to know you, like get to finger gun, get to know you. Um, if you don't know who, uh, much about my story, I almost said know who I am. I'm Andrew again, in case you forgot. That'd be weird. Um, but uh, I'm from Alabama originally. <sighs> Road Tide. Um, JK, LOL. I'm an Auburn fan. Don't yell at me, okay? Jeez Louise. Oh, that's even worse? You know what? Just stop. Uh, anyways, some of us has to do it. Um, all right, so anyways, all that to be said, so distracted right now. Here we go. Uh, this is a picture of me from high school. I know what you're thinking. Swag. I get it. I get it. Uh, this is going into my senior year of high school. If you can't tell, I played sports, um, which was fun. Uh, but yeah, this is Alabama, so beautiful in the background. But uh, this is who I was. Most of you are like, what happened to you? Um, I was 10 years ago this year, which is crazy. But uh, this is me in high school. I, I played sports, as you can tell. And uh, does anybody else in here play sports? Sports? Does anybody in the band in here? Anybody in like drama or maybe you dance? Big drama guy over there. Love drama. Uh, does anybody play musical instruments? Yeah, oh gosh, the musical instrument people are insanely excited. Anyways, uh, you know what it's like. Uh, I spent my summers, probably like a lot of you have spent your summer training for a, a lot of like sports that I played. Big sports guy, obviously very athletic. I know you can tell. But anyways, I spent a lot of my summers playing sports. So much of my time was spent playing uh, in these travel leagues or going to, you know, 11 on 11, 7 on 7 camps or even uh, for me, I worked a job. So I, uh, my senior year, I got a job at a pharmacy. I was a drug dealer. Hey-o, um, that's not a brag. I was a legal drug dealer, um, worked at a pharmacy, but uh, I had to train to be able to get this job. So I had to work all these different angles, all these different things. And maybe you feel that too. Anybody tired at the end of the summer? You're like, I've spent so much time training and, and doing all kinds of stuff that I'm exhausted already. Many of you are like that too. And, and really, that's kind of what my life was like. But uh, if you kind of know what that's like as well, it's usually for a purpose. You're training for a big event. You're training for a purpose. I was training to get a job. I was, I was training so that I could play football or basketball or whatever. Uh, you are training so that you can play an instrument. You're training so that you can be in that big event. Maybe it's, I was in Alabama this weekend, guys. It's embarrassing. I'm sorry. That's the last thing I'll say about it. I watched Alabama public television, which is awesome. Um, but they had Scholars Bowl. People trained literally in knowledge. Does, any, does Scholars Bowl a thing? 
And even uh, these people who are really smart, way smarter than I am, train on the, all these like trivia questions. And anyway, those people trained too, but we all train. We train for something, right? We train for uh, the different things. And, and maybe like you, you found yourself like me, you found yourself in a situation where you didn't train enough. Anybody ever walked into a test and you get there and you haven't studied at all? And you get to that point to where you've got the test, the teacher comes around, passes it in front of you, and you're like, all right, let's do this thing. And you just see the first question, and you're like, yep, I'm going to fail this. And you just kind of give, like, the look to everybody, like, mm-hmm, yep, uh, all right, hey, uh, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, 72. That's a great uh, number. But we've all been in situations where maybe we didn't prepare as well and the outcome probably showed. For me, test taking is my Achilles heel. But for you, it comes up in this. I'm not ready for what's next, right? Like you've got something coming up, you have something in front of you. Once again, maybe it's that sport, maybe it's you know that play, whatever. But you think to yourself like, I'm not ready for what's next. I don't think... I've trained enough for this. And for a lot of us, this feels like life sometimes too, right? Like maybe you're thinking about this coming school year, which guys, it's happening so fast. I'm so sorry to tell you this, but uh, it's coming up so soon. Maybe you've thought like, hey, this summer, I'm gonna, I was gonna work on myself. You know, I was gonna be better than I was last year. And you think to yourself, as we get this close, you're thinking, oh no, I'm not going to be a better version of myself yet. Like, I'm not ready yet. Uh, maybe for you, it is a situation at home that you, that you weren't ready for, you weren't prepared for. Maybe your, your dad came home and was like, hey, I lost my job. Or maybe there was a cancer diagnosis, or, or maybe there was a breakup, and you just, you weren't ready for it. And like you, I've been in situations and I'm still in situations where I think to myself all the time, like, man, I was not ready for that. I was not prepared to enter into that situation. See, the truth is, this is normal probably for a lot of us. And, and it creates, I don't know if you feel this, like an inner anxiety of the what if, like, what if I'm not ready? For, what, if, what if I don't get into that college that I've always dreamed of going? What, what, if, what if this happens? But the beauty is the fact that there is a way to prepare for certain things. There's a way to prepare to be ready so that when we get to moments where maybe it's tempting to not be ready, we are ready through that preparation. And even though we're not ready right now, we can always prepare for the future. And so this is what it does. Preparation produces confidence. If you've ever been in a, in a situation where you've trained and trained and trained a ton and you get to that moment in time and you're like, oh, this is a piece of cake. Like I've done this a hundred times, like no big deal. This is what preparation does for us. Preparation creates in us this ability to be able to do something that because we've trained, we, have, we can walk in with a sense of confidence. And a sense of confidence actually is so awesome because I don't know if you've ever walked into something unconfident about something, it really affects you. You're kind of like in your head the whole time, like, oh crap, oh crap. Um, but when you're prepared for something, it produces this inner confidence. And, and the same is true when we talk about our life of faith. The same is true about our life with faith, that actually preparation produces confidence in us as we follow Jesus. It, it produces more confidence in, uh, in God's goodness. We remember that in situations where we're tempted not to. It, it produces more confidence in God's presence with us. Like these songs, these reminders that tell us that, no, no, no he, he is with us. He's my rock on which I stand. Uh, it, it produces confidence in God's plan for our life. Guys, I don't know if you know this, but God has an incredible plan for each of you. And he wants to use you individually. And, and being able to prepare, that creates confidence that you walk into any situation knowing, hey, I, I know that God's going to use me. I know that God's going to use me. And it may not look like what you think it looks like, just like you may not make the grade that you want to sometimes, and you may not be as prepared, but you walk in with confidence knowing that you've prepared to the best of your ability and that that's good enough, that that is, is good because you have prepared. So how do we gain this kind of confidence? Because especially in a series like this, we're talking about growing our faith. How do we gain confidence 
in our life with faith. And, and this is uh, a, a verse from a guy named Paul, and he's talking to a guy named Timothy. Timothy basically is wanting to know, hey, can you teach me? Can you teach me how to prepare? Like, I'm about to walk into this situation. I'm about to walk in and be a leader of a church. Will you, will you teach me? And Paul, Paul gets to write him a letter, and he says this, train yourself to be godly. Now, that sounds a little weird to some of you. You're like, train yourself to be godly. What does that mean? But the idea of, of training ourselves, of, of preparing ourselves to be godly, to be, uh, let me use another word, like Christ, to be like Jesus. Train yourself to be like Jesus for physical training is of some value. So he's going after what we all talked about just a little bit ago. But he said, godliness has value for all things. Godliness has value for all things, holding promises for both the present life in the life to come. I love that he says godliness has value for all things. He's saying, hey, listen, physical training, that's awesome. It'll get you somewhere. It'll get you to a place where you want to be. But godliness has training for all things. So you're telling me that godliness has, 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 will prepare me for relationships? Yeah. You're telling me that, that training for godliness will prepare me for my life with my family and, and figuring out my career and what college I'm going to go to? Yeah, it, it will. That it, it, will, it will produce in all areas of our lives. And it holds the promise for both the present life and the life to come. Following Jesus isn't just about getting to heaven. Newsflash, I, I thought that for so long in high school. Following Jesus is about living a life here and now that we get to experience the abundant life with Jesus here. So he's saying, hey, train yourselves to be godly. Train yourselves to be like Christ. There's an old saying, your coaches or band teachers or maybe music coaches probably uh, said this for you. Anybody heard of the five Ps? All right, nobody. Five Ps. All right, let me, add. oh, there's one. Wow. Hey, uh, Finn, that's you. What are the five Ps? Proper preparation prevents poor performance. That was a fantastic job. Just called out. Way to go, Finn. East for Scythe. Uh, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Proper preparation pre prevents poor performance. So what Paul is saying in essence is, hey, hey, you can prepare yourself. You can prepare for a life with God. You can prepare for it, not just for a life with God, but right here, right now. But there's a note that I need to make, and I wrote this down so that I didn't miss this. So I, I just want to make this clear. God doesn't judge us by what we do. So hear me say this. God doesn't judge us by what we do. He, he did based on what we confess through Jesus. God's grace and Jesus' work for us are the basis of God's acceptance for us. But here's what this means. And don't miss this. But grace does not mean that sufficient strength and insight for life will automatically just appear in our lives. That just because we start following Jesus, just because we said, hey, I want to follow Jesus, like I, I really want in, doesn't make it easy to follow Jesus. I don't know. It's kind of like the idea of just because, uh, let's, let's do this, just because someone buys an instrument doesn't necessarily mean that they're good at playing it, right? Just because someone joins a baseball team doesn't make them a good baseball player, right? So the reality is, is that we have something to offer in this life of faith. We have something to prepare for. So we must follow Jesus, and that's exactly it. So we must train now for what's next. So <laughs> you're probably asking like, all right, I get it, dude. Can you chill? Um, how do I do that? And I'll tell you. I'd love to tell you, in fact. Uh, there's some areas in which we can grow our faith, and there are these things called spiritual practices. You may have heard them called spiritual disciplines before. You, honestly, you've probably seen these before if you've been around church for a while. Uh, and, and here's a few. Studying Scripture, a.k.a. reading the Bible. Prayer, a.k.a. talking to God. Uh, worship, being in an environment like this, but also being maybe in your car and listening to worship music or being in your room doing the same and being in community. These are practices that you've heard of. You're, you guys are practicing multiple of these right now. 
but he's talking about these on a spiritual and a personal level. So are we doing these things in our personal life? It's really hard, I don't know if you know this or not, to get into the Bible at home by yourself when you have one of these laying in front of you, the glowing screen of goodness. Uh, Yeah, it's really hard to do that. Um, But one of the things that these practices will require of you is the reality of discipline. We don't like the word today. I get it. I do not like the idea of disciplining myself. But we must discipline ourselves so that we can get into these. Why? So that we are prepared for the future. So that we are more confident in what God, who God is, what he says about us, and what his plans are for us. But I, I want to talk about a few more that we don't really talk about as much. And, and when, when we talk about these, these are ancient practices. Christians have been practicing these things for thousands of years. And they're things like silence which means going into a room with no one and nothing else, doing nothing. So not opening a Bible, but just focusing your attention upon God. Silence. Focusing your attention upon God. There's this thing called fasting, which you guys have probably heard your parents talk about intermittent fasting. It's really hot on the scene right now. Small group leaders in the room, intermittent fasting. Oh yeah, there's some head nods. But fasting comes from this Christian idea of being able to take things that may control you, that may beg for your uh, attention at all times. So one of, the, one of the common ones is that people do this in is technology, right? So, you know, recognizing, man, social media pulls me from most of the great conversations that I'm in, most of the time that I could be spending with God alone with him. So you've, I, I've heard of, of, of Christians practicing, hey, and myself practicing fasting from social media, just going, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get off social media for a while so that I can focus my attention upon God because I just noticed that I'm spending way too much time on this. And ultimately, the reason why is because, I don't know if you know this, I'm just going to say it. I never feel better about myself when I spend a ton of time on social media. Like I never get off, I'm like, man, I feel like an awesome dude. <laughs> I don't have enough money, nor the physical, uh, you know, appearance as much of these other people, nor the spiritual appearance if you follow people, follow people who are Christians. So that's one of the things and an example of what fasting can look like, but it can look like a ton of different things. And you're going to talk about these in your small groups. But another one is solitude, spending time away from people, spending time away from the things that distract you, going, hey, when I, when I go and pray this morning, when I go and, and open my Bible, I'm going to put my phone in a room and I'm going to go in another room and I'm not going to let it distract me. Uh, these are things that, once again, I, I, guys, I've been out of high school for 10 years and I, I struggle with this. So I tell you in a way of like, hey, I get it. <laughs> it's really hard for me now. And I've been following Jesus for a really long time. And the last one is simplicity. This idea that our outward pull is always towards more, more money, more things, more, more possessions, more pairs of shoes, more all of this stuff. And this idea of simplicity is practicing, hey, I know that those things aren't going to make me happy because I know ultimately God is the only one who can satisfy me. So this idea of simplicity, which is really hard in our day and age to practice, but practicing, hey, you know what? I could, I could, I could buy this thing off Amazon because it's Prime Day but I'm not going to because I know that I don't need it and I know it's ultimately not going to make me happy. And so these are, these are just some examples of some things. But here's the reality, and this has been the hardest part for, Christian, for Christians, Christianity, for the longest part, and it's this. But do we actually do these things? Like, do we put them into practice? Are we actually training for what's next? And and really the reality of this is that it's really hard to practice these things, just like at the same vein. It's really hard to wake up on a Monday morning before school and go squat in the gym. Anybody? hey oh. It's really hard uh, when you're practicing guitar so much that you have calluses on your finger. Anybody else? hey oh. It's really hard to do these things. But if we want the life available that Jesus has for us, if we want the life available for more peace, I love what Jesus says in Matthew 11. He says, uh, he says I want to give you a life that's freer and lighter. Then we follow his examples. And you can find all of these practices in Jesus' gospels. It's so cool to see that. 
So will they, will they train you for the future? Yes, absolutely. Will they give you a foundation for what's coming next, no matter what it is? Absolutely, yes. Reminders of who God is. And can you walk into the future more confident because you know God intimately and you are following him closely? Absolutely. So here's the decision for you guys. Will you choose one of these disciplines and will you train? Will you choose one of these? You don't have to do all of them. That would be crazy. But will you choose one of these disciplines and commit yourself to following Jesus in this area? Maybe for five minutes, if it's reading the Bible in the morning. Maybe for you, you're like, hey, this is going to be really hard for me. Like, I I just am not that type of person. I can't get up. I remember being in high school and that picture of me as a senior, I just started following Jesus. Just started following Jesus. I had no clue what I was doing. But I had a group of guys around me who, who, were, who were following Jesus with me, who had, who had similar stories and who had just given their life to Christ. And we're trying to figure it out. We're going, okay, how do we do this? And we just said, hey, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to read my Bible in the morning for five minutes. I'm going to try to pray like five minutes. That's it. And would you guys just text me and say, hey, like I'm doing it too. I'm with you. So Monday morning, they're texting me on my phone like, hey, man, I just read about Jesus healing this guy. It was crazy. I don't even know what it means, but I read it and it was awesome. It was a reminder that, that God is ultimately a healer. Or, hey, I just read the story about how God is the rock. He's my foundation for life, like the songs that we sing. Or, hey, I just listened to this worship song that reminded me that, that God does see me in the midst of my situation and pain. And for me, it was an incredible moment because I had walked out of a season of just despair and hopelessness and depression. I was trying to find my security and what people thought about me and if I was good at sports. And what I really found out was that ultimately this was my rock. That training for these things, that practicing these things was reminders for me and were helpful reminders for me of confidence in who God is and what he's called me to do. And ultimately, you know, helped me to where I am today. So one of, the, one of these I would love for you to pick out and train for. Uh, your small group leaders and your small group rooms, they'll have sheets of paper. Your small group leaders have uh, uh, all of these on and a description of them and choose one for yourself. But enough about me. Uh, in this series, we've been inviting up a high school student that's in the same boat as you because uh, I'm 10 years out and what the heck do I know? And so I'm going to invite up my friend, Chloe. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, I loved that. That was amazing. Um, so Chloe's going to come up, and she's going she's gonna to talk about the ways in which uh, she practices these herself. Because it's one thing to be like, to hear this weird random dude with a mustache talk about how these things are really helpful. But it's another thing to hear someone in your shoes and someone who's in the same position as you or maybe a, f- a little bit further down the road talk about what it looks like for them. Because it's not easy, right? Uh, Not at all. all. But uh, it is a beautiful reality that we get to live with, and it's so beneficial for us. So, Chloe, (laughs) thanks for being here. Of course. (laughs) Uh, Chloe, tell us uh, what grade you're in, where you go to school, and your small group. Um, Well, I'm going to be a senior at Forsyth Central, um, and my small group is right over here. My leaders are April, Amy, and Kathleen. Nice. (laughs) Yep. Got the fan club right there. Yeah, Goes always. Central for Scythe. I just had a conversation with some Central guys about if they call themselves dogs with a W. There they are. Oh, dogs. Um, but anyways, um, so what what does this look like for you, right? This is a challenging thing, and so uh, but it's also you've found it to be really beneficial. So what does that look like for you? How do you practice these disciplines? Yeah, um, one thing that I really value is just starting my day by praying, like waking up and immediately talking to God, um, thanking him for giving me air in my lungs just one more day and living my life so I can glorify him um, and just praying for anything that I'm battling with that day. Um, And then I'm a very busy person, as I'm sure a lot of you are. And so I don't have a whole lot of free time, so I don't get to spend as much time as God that I would like to. So I really value my car rides. I turn on my worship music and I spend that time talking to God and I spend that time praying and just worshiping him all that I can. Um, And then I always love to end my days by doing devotionals or just studying God's word and just really absorbing everything I can about him in my last few minutes of my day. Yeah. 
So those are awesome, by the way. Um, what are the benefits that you've seen in your own life, right? Because it's one thing to do these things, and yeah, you know, we do them, right? But the point is not just to do them, to do them. The point is so that we can grow in relationship with God. So what have you seen the benefits in doing those? Right. Um, so my faith has just grown so tremendously over even just the past few months when I've started really uh, consistently reading my Bible and praying to God and just worshiping him in every moment that I could. Um, I've also just been like a happier, more confident person. Yes, I still have my anxieties. I still have my troubles and hardships, but I'm more confident in turning to God and placing all of that on him mm. and knowing that he will, he'll guide me through everything that I'm facing. Absolutely. I mean, in the, I, it's, it's so amazing that in the midst of even a, a bad day, to come home and to, to get a glimpse of the bigger story that God's ultimately in control and that even if we face challenges, those reminders through worship, through prayer, through Bible study, through silence with him uh, are reminders like, oh, oh, you know what? Hey, this has been a, a hard day, but I'm not alone. And uh, it, we're, we're more confident in what he has to say. So what have you seen be the biggest challenges, right? Because we have a room full of high school students here and life is really busy for, I know, all of you. So what have been some of the challenges or distractions in the midst of uh, trying to practice these? Um, a big distraction for me, as I'm sure it is for a lot of you, is technology. And I know that sounds super cliche, but it is something I really struggle with, um, just putting my technology down and focusing on God. So something that I like to do is I turn on my worship music and then put my phone in another room. Close down my computer, put it in another room. I really just want my moments with God to be with God and not distracted by like my phone buzzing or like a notification going off, just like anything I like to be just in that moment. And then another thing, like I said, like I'm a very busy person and I've caught myself using that as an excuse to not spend with God. Um, and so like I said, just like utilize every free moment you have. Don't take anything for granted. Use what you have and glorify God in those moments. That's awesome. What an encouragement. Uh, lastly, uh, what would you give to someone in the room who's like, hey, this all sounds really awesome, but I don't even know where to start. Like, I maybe have just started following Jesus, or maybe I, I want to, maybe I have, haven't been doing these things, and I want to get back into it. So what advice would you give them? Um, my biggest piece of advice is ask the questions you have. Don't be afraid to ask. Nobody's going to judge you. Turn to a mentor, your small group, your small group leaders. I promise that there's somebody there for you that would love to answer these questions. Um, and nobody's going to think you're, like, uneducated on God. Like, nobody's going to judge you for it. I promise everybody just wants to help you grow. Absolutely. That's such a great encouragement to, to know that even if you're at a loss of, like, I don't even, I, I've been a Christian for a long time. I don't even know where to start. Like, that's a little bit embarrassing. But to just go to your small group leaders in the room and go, hey, I want to do this. How, how can I do that? And, and your small group leader would probably find it a joy to come alongside you and to, to walk with you through that. So that's why they're here, which is awesome. Shout out to small group leaders in the room, by the way. You're incredible. Um, but um, you could clap for that, but you obviously didn't. Um, anyways, so uh, for sure. But what I, what I would love to do is I'd love to, for you to pray for us. And uh, then we'll go to small group, but uh, I, I hope that you'll take this time and these conversations to really dive in, because once again, we go to Daytona in a week, and how cool would it be to get to Daytona to be in a better position to be able to hear from God, to be able to uh, be prepared and, and still our hearts to be able to hear from Him. So uh, that would be awesome. That's a challenge for you guys. And uh, Chloe, will you pray for us? Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for everything you've given us. Thank you for the amazing inside out community we have here. Um, thank you for all the leaders and students and everybody who, who's here to support us and help us grow in our journeys. Um, Lord, I pray for motivation for these students. I pray for the eagerness and want to get to know you and grow in their faith. Um, I know it's hard um, getting into these disciplines and I know it's a struggle. So please just stand with these students as they're trying to grow and trying to get to know you better, Lord. Um, I pray for small group, and I pray for the amazing conversations everybody's about to have. And in your name we pray, amen. Amen.